And I'll start with the basics, the, the core elements of what I've been saying for the last couple of years on this program and on other programs. We need politicians in this country to be ambitious. We've got too many, though, who are ambivalent. They're just managing our decline. They're just going along with whatever it is that happens to pop up from time to time. There are plenty of people right now, and you're hearing it loudly from the naysayers who can't understand what it is that Scott Morrison and Josh Frydenberg are doing, and I think they're actually playing an A game right now. There are people who are panicking about the debt, saying, oh, we're never going to pay it off, uh, it's going to be 30 years of misery, uh, the next generation will be angry with us, a child born today will still be paying debt in 30 years' time, all of this stuff. Look, fair income, it is time, it is time to realise that this is a massive debt a massive set of costs that this country did not anticipate having to face, but we've done it all before. There's a generation of people who went through this, those born immediately before the Second World War, during the Second World War and after the Second World War. It was called the boom, the boomers. And indeed, that during the war period, people who built Australia paid down the debt. We've done it all before. We've paid off this sort of debt and proportionally a larger amount of debt after the Great Depression and the Second World War costs were all added together. And what we did then is what we have to do now. We have to invest in our productivity. We actually have to get Australians back into work. We've got to look at the infrastructure we need. We need to secure a long boom because, you see, the bigger the economy gets, the smaller the debt appears to be as a percentage of the overall economy. So that's the answer. We've got to go for growth. The debt is gigantic, uh, $850 billion. It's just under a trillion. In fact, if you add in state-based debts, Australian governments have clocked up well over a trillion dollars in debt. And the only thing left for us is to grow the economy. If you tax people more, you'll shrink the economy. If you bring in more rules and regulations, you'll shrink the economy. You'll scare off investors. We need new money, fresh money. We need the entrepreneurs to go to work, so we need smaller government. We need lower taxes. We need to trust the people. There's that word again. We need to plan for the long term. We need to plan the infrastructure that will make a difference in this country. That involves cheaper power. Playing the card we used to play until we got all hell-bent on meeting international obligations having the clubs of Europe and the United Nations like us so much because we were taxing the bejesus out of you and me and everybody else who uses electricity. We've got to get back to using coal-fired power and maybe investigate the prospects of nuclear-powered heavens. We've got plenty of it in the ground. We sell it off to other countries. Why aren't we using it ourselves? Gener generating the electricity our manufacturing sector would need, uh, that's if we still had a manufacturing sector because we've kind of lost that, uh, we need to get government regulations and rules out of the way and, as I said, lower taxes. We need water where and when we want it. The new Bradfield scheme is the sort of thing that the Queensland opposition are talking about and is something that is long overdue. And, indeed, even projects like Project Iron Boomerang that we've talked about here, a railway line between the Pilbara and the Bowen Basin, the coal and the iron ore, to actually have or the, the sort of smelters and engineering and value-adding that we can to the production of things that we drag out of the ground. These are things we should be talking about now and hopefully planning and executing. And I've got big eyes on the fact that the government has already in this past week received very clear messages from Graham Samuels about the Environmental Protection Biodiversity Conservation Act, the EPBC. We've talked about that on this program as well and I'll continue to talk about that. Government now needs to act shred that act, get rid of it, to get the entrepreneur class into the business of Australia, trusting the people, lower taxes, smaller government, we can do this. And debt won't be as big a problem. Let's face it, when you borrow $800,000 to buy a house, it looks pretty big. But as you pay it off, as you work harder, and that amount of payment goes up because you're putting more money into yourself, you pay it down fast. That's what Australia's got to do. It's pretty simple. Keen to know what you think. Hashtag Hardgrave at skynews.com.au. You can also email me, gary.hardgrave at skynews.com.au.